Hi, my name is Angel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to my January wrap up. I read 23 books in January. Four of them were rereads. So we're just going to talk about them today and I'm going to give you guys all of my thoughts and ratings on all of these books. So I'm going to start off with the rereads. I read three of my like all time favorite books. The first one was Bunny by Mona Awad, um, which is just a very strange fever dream journey. Um, and it still was the second time around, even though I knew the explanation for a lot of the weird stuff. Then I read All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. This reread, I really, really enjoyed this, really solidified this book as an all-time favorite of mine. I love it a lot, but it deals with a lot of difficult topics and a lot of graphic things that not every reader is going to enjoy but I think the way the story to is told is so beautiful and I really I really love this book and this is one that I read for the first time like a really long time ago and every day since I have been thinking about it so yeah then I reread I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid, which once again, this really solidified this as an all-time favorite of mine. Like this is one of my like all-time favorite, absolutely untouchable books. Like anybody that gives this book less than four stars, I'm sorry, but your opinion is just wrong. Like it's just not correct. This book is fantastic. The way that Ian Reid writes and is able to make you feel... <laughs> such specific feelings just through like words on paper is like crazy to me it blows my mind i literally that was my thought when i was rereading this i was like that is so crazy that i feel this way from just reading words on paper and i love ian reed um and this book is freaking fantastic and then i also reread this is not an all-time favorite but i reread verity by colleen hoover um listen back in the day few years ago I'm sure we all at one point became victim to the book talk girls and the Colleen Hoover fans and everybody was saying this book is so scary it kept me up all night <laughs> no um <laughs> but I remember reading it years ago um and really enjoying it really enjoying the twist of it all so I decided I wanted to reread it again because I was like surely it wasn't that great and it wasn't but like it was okay like honestly in terms of Colleen Hoover books, like, this one is not horrible. I don't know. Maybe that's just because it has, like, thriller aspects and a little bit of a twist at the end that I enjoyed. Anyways, those were my four rereads. So now we can get into the 19 other books that I read in January. I'm going to start with my lowest rated and then work my way up to the favorites of this month. So for two stars, I only had one two star, and it was The Remaking by Clay McLeod Chapman. I am really sad about this, actually, because Ghost Eaters by this author is one of my all-time favorite books. He also has another book called Whisper Down the Lane, which I gave four and a half stars and then what kind of mother I gave three and a half stars so overall he's gotten pretty good ratings for me in the past this is an older title of his that I haven't read so I wanted to give it a try um, and it just fell really flat for me so this is about the story of this woman and her daughter who were burned and like killed and accused as witches and then as years go by their story gets told multiple times so they make like different Hollywood movies, there is a podcast element of this podcaster that's telling their story and it just kind of talks about the way that their story is like changed and altered to fit into these big like entertainment spaces. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, the real problem that I had with this was the writing unfortunately. It was so repetitive. Like I know sometimes repetition is good for making a dramatic point but the extent that it was done in this book, it was like every paragraph was like this. Like, I'll give you a sample. Let me think. It was like, I walked towards the woods, the dark woods. I walked towards them. So dark, walking towards the woods, the dark woods. Like, literally like that much repetition, paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. And I was like, this is getting to be too much it really took me out of the story i really was not connected to the story at all i really couldn't get into it i didn't care about the characters and i kept saying because it was divided in like four different parts so i kept trying to say like okay well i'll just get through part two and then maybe part three will get better and it just like never got better uh the ending was really lame in my opinion like if you 
decide to pick this book up and you're reading it and you're not into it and you're debating whether or not to DNF, I would say go ahead and DNF because the ending is not worth the effort that it takes to get there. Um, but that's my opinion. Next, we are moving on to three stars. I had a lot of three stars this month. It was my highest rating that I gave out. The first one is The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose, which is about this woman and her husband and he cheats on her and her his mistress ends up dead. And so now he's like caught up in this murder trial and his wife is an attorney, she's a lawyer, and so she decides to take on his trial and represent him in court and like try to prove that he's innocent. Um, so obviously there's a lot of things there that maybe are unrealistic or just like don't make sense. Like there's a lot of plot holes in this book for sure. But if you can overlook that and you just want a fun and entertaining thriller to read, this is definitely one of those. It was messy. Um, pretty much all of the characters were very, very unlikable. There was a lot of crime elements to it and it had a twist that I did not predict. So if you want something like quick to read that will be fun and you can overlook some inconsistencies, then I would recommend this one. Next, I had an arc, which was Bad Men by Julie Mae Cohen. This is advertised as like a female serial killer novel and I wouldn't really say that that's the case. Like I feel like that's an inaccurate description, but we are following this woman named Safi and she likes to kill bad men but she also has this like obsession with this true crime podcaster. So we get POVs from the both of them and then this true crime podcaster kind of gets caught up um, in this murder case and is a suspect in this murder case and Safi believes that he didn't do it. So she is obsessed with him and is trying to help him clear his name and he's obviously trying to clear his name. Um, so there was a lot of crime solving elements, there was an obsessive romance and it was, I feel like, fast paced and like a very quick read. Like it was entertaining, it held my attention, but it didn't do anything particularly crazy for me. And like I said, I definitely don't think that it really holds up as a female serial killer thriller. I would not describe it as that at all. But I would recommend it if you like things that have to do with obsessive romance and have a lot of crime solving. There is also some really fun chapters where we get to hear about uh, the murders that Safi committed. Uh, unfortunately, there was not enough of that as I wanted, but it was still a fun read. Next is The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. This is a book that started off on the No Sleep subreddit and that is how the book is told, like it's told through these forum posts um, that he created when he was telling the story on Reddit. But this is about this man named Parker who gets a job at this like psychiatric facility and he kind of becomes obsessed with this patient that they have there who is their most like dangerous patient um, and he's been locked up since he was a child and really like nobody's allowed to treat him because everybody that has treated him in the past has ended up dead so Parker becomes obsessed with him and trying to figure out like what is wrong with him and trying to treat him so it was very interesting I really really enjoyed like the setting of the psychiatric hospital I really love books that are set in hospitals and psych wards and things like that and I also really enjoyed like the setup and following Parker as he's uncovering more and more about this patient however the end takes a different type of like it's like a supernatural twist it's a psychological thriller with a supernatural twist so it kind of goes outside of the realm of reality at the end which normally I like in books I really like weird books and when things get weird but this one I didn't really enjoy the twist in it I wanted something that was more like psychological and reality based and that is not what you get in here but for that reason I could see why a lot of other people do like it um, also, you know, like I said, it started off as a Reddit story and it reads just like a Reddit story. The characters are very flat in my opinion. Some of the pacing seemed a little bit weird as well. I feel like at the end, so many big things were happening, but they were happening so quickly. We didn't really get time to sit with them and experience all of these things. Um, so I wish that was a little bit different, but overall I would recommend it if you want a quick read and you want something 
that is psychological and weird and has a twist that you will most likely not see coming. My next three star was Red Rising by Pierce Brown, which is a very loved sci-fi novel. This is like a dystopian sci-fi that a lot of people compare to The Hunger Games, and I definitely understand why. Um, we are basically following this character who is like this minor, like this very low class level minor on Mars, and he's been told his whole life that what he is doing is important work to get Mars ready for the human race to live on. And then one day he finds out that none of that is true and actually they have colonized Mars already and there are wealthy people living on the surface of Mars and he is just at the very, very bottom slaving away and doing all this labor. So then, you know, he wants to start this revolution, that type of thing. I feel like I am with like, like against the majority here. I feel like a lot of people say like this book, oh, you just have to get past like this page number and then it gets really, really interesting. But for me, the most interesting part was that very beginning that a lot of the other reviews said that you had to really slog through and it was really slow, but I really liked the setup of all of it, getting introduced to the characters, getting introduced to the world and learning what they know and what their life is like on Mars, I thought was really, really interesting. And then later on when we get into like the whole game aspect of it, that is where it lost me, but like I said, majority of people, that is where they really started to love the book, so I don't know. There are a lot of characters in here to keep track of. Our main character is named Darrow, and I feel like coming from where he came from on Mars, like I said, just kind of slaving away his life, I feel like he could have been such an interesting character and had such a powerful character arc and really been this person that you could root for. But unfortunately, I feel like he fell into these stereotypes that made me kind of disconnect from his character a little bit, which I didn't really like. Um, at the end of the book, there were still a lot of things that I feel like I didn't get enough of an explanation on. I was a little bit confused. So I'm not sure if I will read the second one and continue the series. Maybe I will, but I know that if I do, it won't be for a while because I don't have any strong desire to pick up the second one after the way that I felt about the first one. I don't know. I just thought it was okay. Like everybody loves this book, but for me, it was just like, it's okay. I don't know. Next, I read Termush. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to pronounce the title. This is by Sven Holm and it is translated by Sylvia Clayton. This is a, like, I think it came out in the 60s. It's a sci-fi, like, apocalyptic novel. Basically, Termush is this hotel where these guests have paid a bunch of money before the apocalypse happened so that when the apocalypse would happen, they would have a safe place to go, they would have a bed, they would have food, and they would be sheltered from the outside world and whatever this apocalypse was so they paid a bunch of money to be there so now the apocalypse happens there is something I don't know radioactive all over the earth so you can't really safely go outside without being exposed to the radiation and so all these people are just living in Termush and then we have this survivor that turns up from the outside with radiation sickness and they decide to give him a place to stay but at the same time they also know that that is not the only person, the only survivor that's gonna turn up there. They know that more are coming. So then they kind of have this debate of like, you know, it's kind of this whole idea, like they paid a bunch of money to be there, to have this insurance that they were gonna be in a safe place after the apocalypse. So why should they have to give out their resources to these other people that didn't do that? So it really has a lot of commentary about society and different classes. Um, like I said, like the wealthy, versus the poor, I don't know, for lack of a better word. I think it was a very interesting concept. This book is just over 100 pages, but I feel like things moved really, really slow, so I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Um, this is one of those books for me that it's like, if you love this book, I get it. If you hate this book, I get it. For me, it was just in the middle. I don't think I'm gonna remember it for very long, but I really enjoyed the concept, some of the commentary that had to be said. Then I read Seed by Anya Alborn, which is an author that I love. I love Anya Alborn. I think she's fantastic. I've also come to learn that I love possession horror. There were three different possession horror books that I read last year that I gave five stars to, at least that I can think of off the top of my head. One of those was Boys in the Valley, which ended up in my top 10 for the year. So I kind of came to the conclusion that I really enjoy possession horror. So I was really excited to try this one because not only is it possession horror, but it's also from an author that I love. But this one kind of, 
fell a little bit flat for me. So this is basically about this man who has kind of a dark past and now he is an adult. He's got two children and a wife and one night they get in a car accident and he sees something, um, these two eyes that he hasn't seen since he was a child and now his daughter has also seen them and then she starts acting very strange and it really kind of been, brings up all these memories from his childhood and what he went through um, and I thought it was really interesting there were definitely a lot of creepy elements in here but overall I feel like it was just kind of lacking something I don't know the pacing was weird as well I feel like everything at the beginning progressed in a very nice way and then like towards the end it just went like zero to a hundred with the possession overtaking and the way that things happened this is also a book that i feel like is very clear to tell where it's gonna go at the end from the beginning there was also one point where there was like something that i think was supposed to be like a shocking reveal but i remember reading the book and at the very beginning i was like oh, I bet this happened. And then they don't reveal it for like 70% of the book. And I think it was supposed to be like a shock, but I was like, it was like one of those things where it's like, you know, it's coming, but you're just waiting for the book to tell you that it happened. You know what I mean? Overall, I would recommend it. This was Anya Alborn's first novel. So I can definitely understand why this really kicked off her like horror writing career. And I think it's really interesting because then you can see how much she has grown as an author from this book to some of her more recent books or some of her books that I really love a lot more. So overall, it was a three star for me. My next three star was Powerless by Lauren Roberts, which I have a lot to say about. Um, I hated this book at first because there are a lot of things I have like an entire list that I'm gonna go through with you guys that are conveniently borrowed, we'll say, borrowed from The Hunger Games. So let's get into the plot of this book. We have this female main character and she lives in this place called The Loot, which is essentially District 12. <laughs> in The Loot, they have these Imperials who are essentially peacekeepers. They have a whipping post that the peacekeepers or the sorry, the Imperials will uh, whip people if they like misbehave or step out of line. Hmm, sounds a little familiar, right? Then on the other end of the spectrum, we have the elites who are these people with these like really powerful powers. And so they live in this like fancy place that could, you know, maybe you could call it the capital, but it's not really called the capital, but it's the capital, you know? But the entire plot of the book takes place with our main character getting pulled into these trials. So one day she just gets told by this Imperial that she has to go to the trials and she has five minutes to say goodbye to her loved ones, which sounds a little bit familiar, right? So they take her away to go to the trials, but before the trials, they get to go to this fancy palace where they have all these nice accommodations, this really good food that she is not used to having in the district, or sorry, the loot that she comes from. Um, and also while they're staying at this palace, they have to do a lot of training for these trials. So while they're doing all this training for the trials, they are being watched by people and the contestants are actually being voted on, which increases their ranking for when they go into the trials. Another thing is that the trials are filmed and televised for entertainment purposes. And one big thing that they have to do before they go into the trials is this pre-trial interview where somebody sits down with each of the contestants and just interviews them, gets to know them so that they can really play it up to the audience watching. But the thing that gets me here, the person who interviews them, she has one specific like signature trait. And you know what that is? She has teal hair. Caesar Flickerman who? <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Okay, but that's not where it ends. Then we go into the trials. Our main character wears her hair in a braid. She crafts a bow and arrow, and in order to kill her food with her bow and arrow, she shoots the animals right through the eye. Um, Katniss Everdeen, who? There is a part within the trials where one of the tributes, whoops, I mean contestants, dies, and they get buried with this nice little flower arrangement. Also within the trials, she has a tender moment with her love interest, this man, as she gets injured and he finds this salve in the arena and he applies it to her wounds to heal her. Um, which sounds a little bit familiar. Also, yes, the trials take place in something that is referred to as the arena. So, as you can see, it sounds 
literally just like the Hunger Games and I hated this book at first because of it but the romance the romance kept me going okay like I'm here for it and then the end got so intense like the way that this book ended I'm definitely gonna read the second one and that's really what bumped it to a three star because I was like I need to see where this is going it definitely feels like towards the end and going into the second book it's gonna get away from the whole like hunger games like trials and type of thing so i'm really curious to see where it goes from there like i said the way that the book ended has me very very interested in reading the second one um but yes there were a lot of things in here that were straight like pulled from the hunger games and like the one that gets me is the teal hair like she didn't even try to make it look different she was like yep teal hair here we go like Moving on, I had one three and a half star book and that is My Throat and Open Grave by Tori Bovolino. This is a labyrinth retelling and it is a YA dark fantasy. I think it's like described as a fantasy horror, but I would definitely say it's more of a dark fantasy than it is horror. I don't think there was a lot of horror elements in it. This book takes place in this small little village where there is this legend of the Lord of the Woods who comes and takes children or babies from the village. So we have our main character, her baby brother gets taken from the Lord of the Woods and so she gets sent out to go and try to get that baby back and she meets the Lord of the Woods. I really enjoyed the atmosphere of this and the setup of it. Some things were kind of repetitive at the beginning where the author is really drilling it into your brain like what this world is and it just kind of got to be a little bit much at times. This is also a book that I feel like it's very obvious to tell where the story is going to go from the beginning but that doesn't necessarily have to hinder your reading experience. I feel like I really liked the setup at the beginning. The middle for me was very uneventful like nothing really happened. We're just kind of following like this girl in her everyday adventures and then the end like the last 20 percent gets very eventful things wrap up very nicely and i really did enjoy the last part of it it's just the middle was kind of like blah so it kind of maybe disconnect a little bit there is a little bit of a romance so those little glimpses kind of kept my interest in the story along the way. There's a lot of commentary within this book on religion and sexism and sexism within the religious community. Overall, I think it was a pretty solid like YA little fantasy romance and I would recommend it, but it didn't do anything particularly crazy for me. And with it being a labyrinth retelling, I really wish that we got more of like fun creatures you know in labyrinth like one of the big things well aside from the actual labyrinth itself um <laughs> is all the different side characters and the different creatures that she encounters and we didn't really have that like every character in this book is just like a person so i wish there was more different creatures within it but that's just my own personal thing. Next, we are into my four stars. Things are looking up for us. My first four star was Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana, which is an extreme horror and it definitely does not hold back. It is very, very brutal and literally traumatizing. We basically are following this woman who is really obsessed with serial killers and she has this pen pal who is in prison for murdering people and she's like obsessed with him and like kind of in love with him so he wants her to prove her love and he sends her on this little task to go down the river to retrieve something and bring it to the river man who is kind of this elusive figure like nobody knows really who the river man is he's just kind of this presence on the river um and then it's just it's crazy from there this book like from the first 10 pages like what's filling me with dread and just making me feel like this awful feeling inside because you know that things are not going to end well. There were so many fantastic elements to this story but definitely a lot of like horrible elements. Definitely look up trigger warnings for this one um, but it is an extreme horror so like I feel like any extreme horror you should look at trigger warnings if you are somebody who's sensitive to certain topics. Um, this I can't, I don't even know what to say. Like, I really loved the way that the story unfolded. I love the way that Christopher Triana brings this, like, feeling across through his writing where it's, like, all these horrific things happening really get under your skin and really make you feel absolutely disgusting and 
but like in the best way possible i don't know i just thought it was really really good i am really really itching to read the second one now and see what the story is in the second one but i really love this i would definitely recommend it if you are someone who likes to read extreme horror my next four star was Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison, which is about this woman who grew up in this very religious community, kind of like a cult. And so she moved away at 18. Now it's a few years later and she gets this wedding invitation for her cousin. I think it's her cousin. So she decides to go back and she really starts to uncover a lot of things about this community while she's there. A lot of things that she kind of pushed to the back of her mind, tried not to think about a lot of things that she never knew are being revealed. And I thought it was very interesting. I really, really loved the atmosphere of this story and I really loved like the setting of where they were as far as like the community and this like cult and where that all takes place. Like this is one where when I wasn't reading the book, I was wanting to be in the world and be immersed in it. Like I was definitely thinking about it even when I wasn't reading it. This is like classic Rachel Harrison, very fun, very cozy horror, a little bit silly at times, but I really, really enjoyed it. The ending went a different way than what I was expecting, but I thought that it still like it was a good ending for the story and overall I really enjoyed it. My next four star was Murder in the Family by Kara or Kara Hunter. Um, this is like a true crime sort of story. It's basically like this true crime show that is investigating this murder that happened, but we are reading like along with the show. This is a mixed media format, so we get a lot of different like aspects in the book we get the transcripts from the actual show but then there's like newspaper articles and different pictures and images um within the book so it's really really fun i would definitely recommend physically reading this so you can really look at everything within the book i would definitely recommend this if you like true crime shows and anything that has to do with like crime solving if you like a mixed media format it was really really fun to follow some of the reveals may have been a bit predictable but it was very very twisty and there were some things that I didn't see coming that were revealed. Overall, it was very, very fun to follow. This is one where I, when I wasn't reading it, like I was thinking about this and like theorizing about the characters. There was one point um, on the day that I was reading it where I put it down and I took a nap. And then when I woke up from my nap, like the first thing I thought of was like the characters. And I started theorizing like the minute that I woke up from my nap, like that's like this book was really just in my brain. Like it was weird, like strangely addictive reading experience but I really really enjoyed it I definitely would recommend it if it sounds interesting to you I think it was definitely worth the hype I really really loved the ending of this book as well I can't say too much but I really really liked the way that the end went the next and last four star read that I had is The Country Will Bring Us No Peace by I don't know if it's Matthew Simard this is translated by Pablo Strauss this book is very hard to explain. It's a very, very short book, just over 100 pages, but it still really packs a punch. Um, this is about this couple who is trying to conceive a child and the woman can't get pregnant and they decide to move to this very, very small town in the country, live kind of a quiet life and hopefully get away from the stresses of like the big city and the life that they had beforehand. So this is a book that really is focused on like family and relationships and grief and the writing is so beautiful there were so many like just beautiful quotes and just really really like hard hitting things um like I said like very very heavy focus on grief so if that is a sensitive subject then I would say go into this with caution because it does not hold back um, with a lot of things later into the book as we learn a lot more about this couple. There is also like an unsettling kind of ominous feeling to this town that they move into. Um, there's definitely something weird going on. A lot of the locals are very strange towards them um, and the house that they move into has this weird history. So it's very, very interesting. Things very slowly unfold. Like it's not a very fast paced or in your face horror book, but it was 
it was an interesting experience. Like it's really hard to talk about um, and recommend, but if you like kind of quiet horror things um, that just give you this weird feeling throughout and something with absolutely beautiful writing, then this is a good book for you. Moving on now, I had two four and a half star reads. The first one was another Ian Reed, We Spread. Um, this is about this woman who is an elderly woman and she is living on her own and she falls one day and so they decide to take her to this kind of like senior living like assisted living place very very small community and things are very very strange there and once again like I don't know how to explain this like it's an Ian Reid book like just go in knowing that um for me I feel like this didn't live up to his other books uh Faux and I'm thinking of ending things I think I liked a lot more not that I didn't like this it just was definitely more like like abstract or ambiguous like there was definitely an open ending on this one where it's really up to you to take what you want from the story and make what you want out of it I definitely had a lot of fun reading other people's theories um after I finished this book because I just wasn't entirely sure what to make of it. So if you've read Ian Reid before, like I'm thinking of ending things or Faux, like you know that both of those have like a very clear twist that is kind of revealed in both of them. You don't really get that with this. Like I said, it's a lot more open-ended, but I really just love Ian Reid's writing. Like I think when I finish this book, I put on Goodreads, like it's not an Ian Reid book. It's an Ian Reid experience. And I stand by that, especially after rereading, I'm thinking of ending things, like that's an experience, you know? There's a lot to be said about life and death and aging within this. It's a very beautiful, very haunting story. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. But I think this is definitely one that I will probably reread again in the future to see if I can pick up more things. Like, there's very, very heavy symbolism within this. And I'm just, I don't know. I just want to see if I reread it, um, what my takeaway is at the end. My other four and a half star read was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, which is a very classic sci-fi fantasy. I feel like everybody's probably heard of this book. This is essentially about this guy and his friend who he learns is an alien and then he also learns that the earth is ending and his alien friend whisks him away onto this alien spaceship and basically saves his life because everybody else on earth dies um and then we just kind of follow them as they're going throughout the universe and they're encountering these different aliens and creatures and like different worlds and i thought it was really really fun this is a series i don't know if i'll go on to read the series maybe i will at some point in the future but i really really enjoyed this one i think it was really fun i can definitely see why it is so well loved and why it still stands up today there are a lot of different things to be said in here about um being a human and the human experience and life in general and it's just very like philosophical i feel like and i really really did enjoy it now we are on to my five star reads i had four five star reads for january the first one was the september house by carissa orlando which was actually my first book of the year so we started off really really strong this is about this woman who lives in this house where every september like weird stuff starts happening like the walls start bleeding um there are ghosts that kind of hang out in the house like year round but they get really crazy in september for some reason um, so we're just kind of following her and she lives in this house. She moved there with her husband who has mysteriously gone missing and her daughter who does not live there. Um, she kind of lives on her own. She's an adult and she finds out that her father went missing and she's like, mom, what the hell? I'm coming over there. But she decides to come and kind of do this little investigation into her father's disappearance in the month of September. So then her mother's trying to figure out how can I hide all this crazy stuff from her? Our main character has such a chill attitude toward everything that's happening. She's just like, oh yeah, I have this routine so I know how not to step in blood every morning and I know which ghosts to not go near and I know which ghosts are messing with me when they do this and it's just really really fun like it was very silly and fun but I feel like it still had a lot of creepy elements it really gives you this classic horror feel but also deep down there are a lot of darker elements um, that 
it, they are difficult topics brought up, but I feel like they are explained so well and everything is so intentional to the story and the story of the characters of this woman and her husband and her daughter. And I really, really enjoyed that. This is one that I describe as being crafted as like the perfect horror story because it's silly and it's fun, but you also get connected to the characters. There are a lot of darker themes. There is some very creepy elements within and it's just one that when I was reading it, I did not want to put it down. Like I love this book. Like I could not recommend it enough. Next is How Can I Help You by Laura Sims, which not only got a five star from me, but it also moved into my all time favorites. This is like a psychological suspense novel that has to do with obsession. We are following this woman who has a very dark past. Um, a lot of things are not quite clear to the reader at the very beginning, but are alluded to. And she is now starting this new life and under a new identity working at a library. And then we have this other woman who comes in also kind of starting a new life, but in a different sense. And she starts working at the library as well. And they both kind of become obsessed with one another. And it just goes from there. Like it's weird. Plot wise, I feel like not a lot happens within the book, but also like a lot of things happen at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. I really, really loved the writing. It was absolutely captivating, like held my attention thoroughly. I really liked both of the characters as well because we are following both point of views, but neither point of view felt boring to me. Sometimes when you read a book with dual point of view, there's one point of view that kind of is lacking and you just want to get through that one so you can get back to the character that you really like. But that did not happen for me in this one. I feel like I was very interested in both point of views even though we would sometimes get the same event told twice from each different per point of view. It still never got like boring or repetitive for me. Um, the end as well took me off guard. I feel like I should have seen it coming but like in my head there were two different ways that this book was going to end and then it just like came out of nowhere with this third um, ending which I was like oh I should have seen that coming and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely going to read more from Laura Sims in the future, some of her other books that she has published before and I would definitely recommend this one. My next five star was The Tusks of Extinction by Ray Naylor. This one just came out and it was a release that I was really, really excited for. This is a very, very short sci-fi novel. It basically takes place in the future when elephants have gone extinct and Science somehow comes up with a way to bring mammoths back um, as being like the only kind of closer species to elephants. But because there are no more living elephants on earth and they don't know how these animals really like survived or kind of worked at all, they bring back this doctor who was this like elephant expert and she's like the only mind on earth that knows anything about the way that elephants lived. So they take her consciousness and put it into one of these mammoths that they brought back so that she can lead the mammoths and help them to survive on their own. Um, it was very, very interesting. There was a lot of commentary on a lot of different things. There's a lot of talk about poaching and the impact of humans and the devastation that we have caused on earth and to different animals on earth. Like this story definitely had like a specific intention and it definitely did exactly what it intended to do. It's very powerful, very, very sad and very, very tragic. I really enjoyed the ending. I really enjoyed the way that the story was told. Even for being 98 pages, it still has that powerful impact and I would definitely recommend this. I will 100% be reading more from this author very, very soon. So I'm really, really excited for that. And my last five star was a nonfiction called They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill us by Hanif Abdurraqib. This is a collection of essays that have to do with a lot of different things. Um, race, gender, identity, equality, um, inequality, and each essay is kind of related to this musical artist or some like pop culture moment which was really really interesting. Even if you don't know that musical artist, you don't listen to them, I feel like that doesn't hinder the reading at all because um, you know, at the core of it, the essays talk about different social issues. I think Hanif is a fantastic writer. Like this is the first book I've read by him and I am definitely going to pick up more in the future because this was absolutely fantastic. Like a lot of the stuff he wrote about was just like 
so powerful and just so extremely like exceptionally well written that I really really loved it. There was sort of a mix of like writing style and formatting for some of the essays as well which I really feel like helped to get his point across um, with the storytelling and the different things that he was talking about in those essays. I think it was a very very smart idea to take different writing styles and different format styles for the essays that he did. My three personal favorites from this collection were Schoolboy Q Wants White People to Say the Word, which was an essay essentially about the N-word and the history of the N-word and the weight that that word holds um, for different communities and just a lot of conversation about that word and about language itself. Then Fallout Boy Forever was not only an essay about Fallout Boy, but it was about one of the author's friends who passed and it was very, very sad and like very powerful and definitely like just makes you feel everything that he intended to make you feel. And then another one of my favorites was called Black Life on Film, which not only talks about like black actors in Hollywood and movies with black actors in it but on the flip side on film of black people being killed you know and being filmed and posted on social media and how horrific that is and I think that everything like I don't know like I said he's just an exceptional writer and everything was very very powerful within this collection he finished with a story or an essay called surviving on small joys which was another one of my favorites and i think that was a fantastic way to end the collection and really encapsulate everything that he was trying to say with this collection um i would definitely recommend this if you are looking for a hard-hitting uh non-fiction to read this is definitely the one to go with like i said even if you are kind of apprehensive about the whole like music element of it like that does not hinder the reading at all and i think is very very smart a lot of the um analogies and different things that he compares with his writing i don't know how to explain it but it was really really good and I'm really really happy that I read it because it has been on my TBR for a very long time. It's funny too because this was a book that I kept putting off reading because I was like I want to buy my own physical copy when I read this and then I decided nah it's okay I'll just get one from the library and read it because I really want to get to it and now I'm wishing that I had waited because there were so many different things that I would have highlighted and annotated within here. There were so many fantastic quotes and different talking points within this book like I can't recommend it enough if you can't tell but with all of that being said <laughs> that was a lot that was all 23 books that I read in January so let me know if you guys have read any of these if you have similar thoughts to me or not and with all of that being said thank you so much for watching hopefully I will see you guys next time